Welcome to Answer the Call, the radio ministry of Heritage Baptist Church and Pastor Curtis McMiller. You know, folks, back in the 1740s, America was in a spiritual crisis over freedom, and pastors on horseback were preaching revival to every city and hamlet across our land. The Christian settlers answered the call, defeated a tyrant, and became the America we know. Today we have a tyrant of our own making, the invisible tyrant of unbelief. And once again, our pastors are raising the alarm, encouraging us to fight against this enemy we can't see. Here's Pastor McMiller to show us how to once again answer the call. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to another edition of the Answer the Call broadcast. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home this evening. Over the past few weeks, we have been entertaining the thought forward by faith. And on our last broadcast, we were looking at a faith that goes. By way of introduction this evening, we just read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. And in that portion of the word of God, we were given the account of how Israel, God's chosen people, had crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. Of course, the Lord God himself had to encourage and strengthen Moses at that point of decision. Note the text with me, Exodus chapter 14, verse number 15. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. You may be asking yourself the question, How does one display a faith that goes forward? Well, in our last study, I mentioned several key elements that accompanies this desire to go forward. First of all, in our study, we discovered that to go forward, it is seen by those who are willing to give towards sending missionaries on the mission field. Now, friend, not all of us can go, but surely all of us can give. You see, those who are willing to invest financially that missionaries might be able to take the gospel message unto the regions beyond are displaying a faith that goes. Secondly, we mention how that those who display a faith that goes are those who pray for others to become followers of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said these words concerning his people, the Jewish people, in Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Listen, friend, if you are a child of the King, you should have the earnest desire to see to it that your kin people, those that you've known all your life, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For friend, make no mistake about it. This is the evidence of those who possess a faith that goes. You see, a key ingredient for those who have this uncanny desire to go forward for God, this thing is seen in their willingness to pray that others might be saved. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 says, With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Christ. Let me ask you, my friend, do you display a faith that goes? If so, it will be seen in your desire to engage in prayer so that others might become followers of Jesus Christ. I am so glad that there was someone or perhaps several someones 
who was praying for me when I was lost on my way to a devil's hell. But glory be to God that people were praying that Curtis McMiller would give his heart to Jesus Christ. And for these 33 years on this side of the cross, God has proven himself to be good to me. And that is made possible because of the prayers of the saints and how this young man at that time was willing to give his heart to Jesus Christ. Also, as we think about those who possess a desire or a faith that goes, it will be seen in their willingness to take the gospel message in the form of personal soul winning to others. The Lord Jesus Christ puts it this way in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 15, Jesus said, and he said unto them, speaking to his disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jude, in that small books found in the New Testament, located before the book of Revelation, Jude said, in verse 22 and 23, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. You see, my friend, even Jude himself understood the need to get the gospel message to those who were on their way to an eternal destination, a place called hell, a place that was not originally designed for you and I, my friend, but was designed for the devil and his angels. And yet, due to the degree of sin, due to how sin keeps a person out of God's heaven, God had no other alternative but to send those who reject the message of his saving grace, God had no recourse but to send them or allow them to go to a place called hell. But glory be to God for the soul winners, those who are able to take God's message to a lost and dying world. The apostle Paul, as he was reaching out to the elders of the church of Ephesus, said these words, in Acts chapter 20, verse number 31, Paul said, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. Oh, my friend, listen to the broken heart of Paul as he made it perfectly clear how the tears were a part of his efforts to warn a world headed towards a devil hell concerning their need to be saved. You see, my friend, if there is one thing that stands out concerning those who have a faith that goes, it is their effort to win souls. Listen, our churches are diminished due to a lack of soul winners. Our children, our families are demoralized for a lack of soul winners. Our nation is devastated as a result of a lack of soul winners. How we need soul winners. We need men, women, and children with a burden for souls. You see, my friend, a faith that goes on display, a faith that goes forward is a faith that is able to have this desire to win souls. But then lastly, what is a faith that's on the go? It is a faith that aggressively shows others that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. Now this is seen in two notable ways. Number one is seen in our boldness. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, but even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated. As ye know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Friend, 
It's time for God's soldiers to get back into the battle. It's time for God's all-star team players to get back on the field and show this sin-cursed world that we do serve a risen Savior. There ought to be an all-hands-on-deck appeal, call, cry, sent out from the average pulpit today for a people, a people of faith, to be bold in their stand for Jesus Christ once again. But not only by our act of boldness will others know that we are a follower of Jesus Christ, but it also will be seen by your testimony. The Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. These are the words spoken by the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians verse 8 concerning the church that labored for the cause of Christ. He said, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and, and Arcadia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything